For watches, the 1970s was a huge period of change. Quartz watches were exploding onto the scene, and quartz threatened to kill off the automatic movement completely. I mean, even Rolex went through a period of making quartz watches. And in the early 1970s, we saw the first digital watches with LED displays. Now, almost five decades later, some of these earliest designs are being brought back to life by the brands that created them. And in 2022, I think they're pretty cool. Guys, if you're new to the channel, my name's Simon and I mostly talk about watches. Now, the watch I want to talk to you about today was released earlier this year by Belova. It came out around the same time as the Moon Swatch, and with all the hype around that one, you'd be forgiven if you missed it. Now, while this is a very different watch to the Omega Swatch collab, for not a lot more money, I think this one is way cooler. Now, I reached out to Belova's press people to ask if I could borrow one of these to review on the channel and they actually sent me two versions of it to check out. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll give you my full verdict on them, as well as a few ideas I've got for improvement. But before we get into it, just a quick reminder to hit that thumbs up button, as likes really help the channel to grow. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so now and go back and check out some of my other videos later. So the Belova Computron D-Cave is a reissue of one of Belova's most famous models, the Computron which was originally launched in 1976. However, this one isn't a carbon copy of that original. With this watch, Belova has collaborated with a brand called D-Cave, and they've created a much more modern interpretation of the Computron. I mean, it keeps a lot of the retro charm, but they've blended it with some really modern design details. Now, for those of you who aren't down with the kids like me, D-Cave is an online store where you can buy both physical items like clothing and other gear that's made purely out of pixels for use on platforms in the metaverse, things like Decentraland, for those people who like to live out life in an imaginary world instead of living in the real one. Now, the truth is, I didn't know what it was either and had to look all of this up. So in the last 10 years, watch brands have spent an increasing amount of their time thumbing through their back catalogues and looking for horologically significant models that they can bring back to life. And to understand why I think this reissue from Belova is so cool, I think we need a brief history lesson. Feel free to skip ahead two minutes if you just want to see the watch, but if you're a proper watch geek, then stick with me. So the very first digital watch with an LED display was developed by Hamilton, and it was called the Pulsar. The story of how it came about is a really interesting one. So in the late 1960s, Hollywood director Stanley Kubrick approaches Hamilton to make a futuristic-looking clock for the film that he's working on, 2001, A Space Odyssey. I think he was making that around the same time that people think he was faking the moon landings. The clock that Hamilton created used light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, to display the time, and it was the first clock to have no moving parts. It wasn't long before Hamilton managed to adapt this design to a wristwatch, and in 1970, they launched the Pulsar, which initially went on sale for $1,500. And that's the equivalent of about $11,000 in today's money. In fact, the watch was launched on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, who joked about the watch, saying that it would tell you the exact time that you went bankrupt. But despite the hefty price tag, the Pulsar was a huge hit, and it even featured on the wrist of a certain British secret agent, long before Omega became the brand of choice for Mr. Bond. <clears throat> One more time again. I'm sure the overburdened British taxpayer would be fascinated to know how the special ordnance section disperses its funds. A few years later, and with LED technology being more widely adopted and the price of it starting to become a bit more affordable, in 1976 we see two new digital LED watches being released. There's the Girard Perigo Casquette, which is sold as a driving watch because this one has got its display mounted on the front edge rather than on the top which meant that you could still tell the time while driving, without having to lift your hands off the steering wheel. The display on the casket was also mounted under a shroud, so that you could still read the time even in bright sunlight. Remember, back in those days, LED technology was still in its infancy, and so it wasn't very bright or efficient. In the same year, Belova releases the Computron, which is also styled as a driving watch with its display on the front edge. 
but this one isn't covered by a shroud. Because LED technology used a lot of power back in the 1970s, both watches featured a button on the side of the case, which you pressed to tell the time. It would display the time for a few seconds before shutting off to save battery life. Of course, pressing the button meant using your other hand, which if you were driving would mean taking it off the wheel. So calling them driving watches was pretty ironic, really. So fast forward to the present day, and such is the horological significance of each of these three watches, the Pulsar, the Computron, and the Casquette, that all three have been re-released in recent years. Belova initially re-released the Computron back in 2019, and that version was pretty faithful to the original design, with a gold PVD-coated case and a red LED display, as well as a version with a silver finish and blue LEDs. Both of those models featured stainless steel bracelets, just like the original. For this collaboration with Decave, Belova has released two new versions of the Computron. Both have a black PVD-coated finish with green accents and green LED displays. There's this version on a black rubber strap, which is edged in green, and I think this really suits this watch, as well as this limited edition version, which has a stainless steel bracelet that's also in black. The case is pretty compact at 41 mm by 30 mm, and in terms of height, it angles from just 10 mm at the back of the case to 13.8 mm at the front, where the top of the case meets the display. And the strap or bracelet is integrated into this case. Effectively, it makes it a lugless design, and it wears really well even on smaller wrists like mine. This limited edition version also has this rather cool mineral crystal window on top of the case, which reveals the circuit boards inside the watch. It's a nod to the display case backs that you'd normally see on many automatic watches, which I think is kind of fun. Both of these watches feature the same digital module, so they operate in the same way, with a button on the side of the case to display the time. And if you keep pressing it, you can cycle through the seconds, the date, the day, and a second time zone. On the back of the watch, and just like the original, you've got this screw down battery hatch, which will make battery changes really simple. And the watch is water resistant to 30 meters. This limited edition watch is priced here in the UK at £399. It's limited to a thousand pieces, and it comes with a QR code that takes you to a dedicated below the DK space on Decentraland. The non-limited version with the black rubber strap has an RRP here in the UK of £299, and this one would be my pick of the two. Why? Well, as I said earlier, I prefer the look of this watch on the black rubber strap. It's really well made, and a very supple one too. I've actually been wearing this watch for just over a week, and it's been super comfortable. I've also really enjoyed wearing it, and it brings a little smile to my face every time I look down and see it on my wrist. But while the display case top on this limited edition version is pretty cool on first impressions, because this watch has got no moving parts, there's nothing that really makes me want to keep looking at it. Any other criticisms or complaints? Well, my only minor niggle would be the fact that you've got to press this button on the side of the case to be able to read the time. At first it's a bit of a novelty, but it becomes a chore after a while. I mean, in this day and age where convenience is everything, and if you're anything like me, then quite often you'll probably have your car keys and your phone in the other hand. So although it would be a departure from the original, I think some sort of always on display or a sensor that lights a display when you move your wrist would be a really welcome improvement in my opinion. Also, as someone who likes to take pictures of their watches and post them on social media, it would be really handy if this display stayed on a little longer. Trying to take pictures of this watch can be really frustrating, because that display stays on for about four seconds after you press the button, which just about gives you the time to compose a shot before it immediately goes off. So I found myself doing an awful lot of swearing this week, just trying to get a few pictures of it. Guys, that's it for another one, but I'd love to know what you think of the Belova Computron, so let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll see you on the next one.